So does quantum physics believe that there is no concept of time and space? So there is this uh, latest theory called the block universe theory that states that you, the universe is only a, a entire block. Mm. There's no time and the, it's made up of space. Time is only a matrix that cuts out space. Mm. And it's more of a man-made construct. It's in, more in the mind, right? Mm. So out there in the universe, it's all empty space. So if there's no time, why I ask this is then that there is no past life that I'm accessing. So does that mean that I'm just accessing my own version in a different universe? In the now. In the now. Yes. So for my mind, it might be a past life. Ah. But for the universe, it's already there. It's in the it's now. There. It's right now happening. It's happening in the now. And our job is to go back and pick up all those unprocessed versions of us that are lying wounded there. Mm -hmm. To integrate it into my soul if I want to reach moksha. Karma healing and past life healing primarily is for us to attain moksha. Like, uh, can I give an example? Let's say your soul is very malleable hmm. and it's a bunch of energy. Now, as I'm transitioning through this tunnel of life, I leave a little bit of my soul somewhere unprocessed. It's made up of energy. It's meant to be in motion. But one block of my soul as matter got trapped, let's say, in one timeline. And I've moved forward. Then I leave another piece there. In another timeline, I move forward and I leave another piece. So by the time I've reached my current lifetime, the current now moment, I'm only, let's say, about 40% of me because 60% is left behind. So if I want to be whole and complete, I have to go back and pick up all those fragmented pieces of my soul that I left behind due to unprocessed, uh, I was just trapped as unprocessed energy. And I have to bring back all those versions of me integrate them into my soul if I want to be whole, uh, whole complete and reach moksha. That's what becoming whole actually means. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know what, uh, leaving one limb behind and then yeah. leaving another limb behind. And by the time you're living life, you're totally like uh, paralyzed. Yeah. So if you got to go back and bring back all those pieces of you that you left behind uh, as disintegrated versions of you and reintegrate them back into your soul. And that's what moksha is all about. It's also said that past life regression also helps you in unlocking your gifts, right? Because you access uh, maybe some better versions of also what you are, right? But isn't that also quantum jumping? Is there any intersection of quantum jumping? In? So quantum jumping is a very good concept to move forward to a future version of yourself right. to create something for the now, like manifest. Mm -hmm. However, if I have not healed my past life mm -hmm. and I've quantum jumped, then the unprocessed matter will pull me back. Okay. So I might not sustain the new version of me. Mm -hmm. So the safest way of quantum jumping, the first step is first I heal all my past versions and then I quantum jump into a new version of me or a parallel timeline or a parallel universe. Please understand uh, the past versions of you are very dense mm. because they are unprocessed energy, they are dark matter, okay? So, and they are carrying your vibration on it. Mm. So, if I quantum jump into another timeline, but something unprocessed remains behind, I will be pulled back with more density and that's the reason why people move up and they fall down okay. real badly. Yeah. So, the first step is heal those versions and then quantum jump into a new reality, a new parallel timeline. See, no one talks about it. Like I've seen so many of these reels come up and you know, so many experts talking about quantum jumping. No one talks about it. It's so important to heal all those different versions of you that you were in your past life or maybe, you know, different in your different universes that you are. That's I think that's a good point for everyone who's watching this that heal those versions first. Interesting. So um, how do you differentiate between uh, a karmic cycle that this has happened because of my past life karma or uh, and the subconscious reprogram uh, subconscious programming which ultimately becomes a belief in our foundation also how do we differentiate because most of the times we are like you know this is because of my karma it's very difficult to differentiate for an unaware person like today at this level of my consciousness if you ask me i just know uh, i can differentiate however when the memory shows up mm. right you have this innate knowingness that this happened to me when I was in my mother's womb or this happened to me when I was a child or this is memory is not from uh, this lifetime, it's from another lifetime. Okay. So, and your soul knows it. It 
your soul is all knowing and all pervasive it just has innate intelligence however for another person to identify my uh, memories it's really difficult nobody can do it for you uh, even the role of a past life therapist is just to take you through the process it is your soul and your uh, consciousness that identifies what trauma is ready to be healed mm. and another thing we cannot force open a past life memory mm. it's like a wound yeah. you know you can't force open the past to come out mm. it has to be right from within mm. right and one of the ways you recognize it is that some memory is ready to pop out and the past is re- ready to wo- mm. ooze out is when there is a certain activated emotion in you mm. so that's the time you need to go to a therapist or a healer and say okay something is getting activated i'm feeling very irritated very angry very anxious yeah. so and that is the right time right for some memory to show up okay because you know um, when i came across past life regression for the first time and we i think mo- for most of the indian audience we watched it on a television show right um my fear was that if i go through it and what if you know i did something so horrible and i happened to see that that i inflicted suffering in someone that i would feel guilty so i might know the cause that why is it happening but i might come back very wounded so how do you take care no, of that no so uh, once we open up a memory we make sure we integrate it back with processes mm. so that you don't walk out with open wounds and feeling more guilty or more re-traumatized exactly. because that's even more dangerous for my nervous system mm. because something that i was not aware had happened in some lifetime now the box is open and now i'm feeling every emotion of it to every cell of my body so then we have processes like eft mm-hmm. and hope no po no to help you heal the karmic wounds okay. and we or even through breath work we reintegrate you back okay. and we leave you whole and complete in the now moment mm. yeah else you know people would be literally coming back traumatized yeah and one of the, the most powerful statements in eft that our subconscious mind and our conscious mind registers is we make a declaration and a command that was then and this is now mm. so suddenly your brain gets this distinction that okay that happened then Yeah. and now i have a choice to make another choice mm. so that really helps you separate it mm. Mm. interesting okay so typically you know how uh, we guys look at karma it's a very tit for tat approach i feel for example i think in this would be a dialogue we all would have heard uh, while growing up that if you do not have money or you know we are constantly in debt then uh, we might have heard it from our elders that you know it might I might have stolen money from someone in my past life or you know I would um, have kind of taken some someone's share it's always like this this happened to me because I might have done this to someone in my past life is it actually true or there can be a karma which is totally unrelated but can still manifest and affect an angle of your life which you are not able to connect for example that people who have breathing problem they actually encountered it because they might have in their past life caged maybe a pet right or maybe kind of in this birth they have a breathing problem so karma which is totally unrelated but still affect an area of my life which i'm not able to connect with yeah so rather than using the word tit for tat i'd rather use uh, the concept of cause and effect cause and effect yes right? yes so to every cause there's a effect that comes in right however if you understand the law uh, there is this law that say to every action there's an equal, equal and opposite, opposite reaction to that so uh, if on one side i have a choice if i give you negative and i have a choice to suffer negative hmm. there's an opposite reaction also at the same time there is a possibility of looking at the positive and choosing a positive so there's nothing like a tit for tat it's about awareness and the conscious choice on my presence in the moment mm. right like your example let's say if um, i suffocated someone so in this lifetime i have a breathing problem mm. right now if i become self aware i don't have to suffer through it mm. but there's also something you must understand let me give you an analogy let's take a glass of water okay now in the glass of water i first pour mud right it settles in then i pour little grease mm. right uh and then i pour little paint mm. 
Now, by the end of it, it all gets mixed up and I can't tell the mud from the grease and the paint. It's all mixed up. It's in the same glass. Yes. So, our memories are exactly like that. So, our karmic memory could be the grease mm. or our uh, childhood womb trauma could be the mud I'm talking mm. about. So, it's very difficult to say which memory is coming from where because it's all in one container in my unconscious or subconscious memory and it's mine. Yeah. Yeah. So, today I just like to take them back into timelines to process anything that's unprocessed. Mm. It doesn't matter it's coming from karma mm. or it's coming from your mm. childhood, mm. but you got to process it. Right. It's right. kachada. Right. Either which ways. Right. Right? Yeah. So today, because I'm more evolved and there's more understanding, I realize it makes more sense to um, just go through the healing process. Mm. Dr. Ramon, this has been, what should I say? I'm just like mind blown at every every answer that you gave. Uh, our crew members are like mm. absolutely mind blown. And I think this is one of the first times in our podcast we have done so many. But first time that we are like, oh my God. And everything that you have said, like literally in awe of it. And I think it is also one of those podcasts where we we, we leave this room with a bit more honor for, you know, for ourselves and a bit more of self-love and compassion towards ourselves. This is personally, I think definitely it has touched all of us somewhere and it would make that change within us. So thank you so much. I mean, I would love to take this conversation even longer. <laughs> Because I think the topic is so exciting, but uh, big, big, big gratitude to you for opening your heart and opening all the knowledge that you have with us. And I really hope that anyone who listens to this feels the same way, the way we felt all throughout this conversation. So thank you so much for doing this with us and just more and more power to you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I think I loved every bit of it too. And for everyone who's watched this podcast, please don't forget to like, subscribe our channel. And if you think that, you know, you know someone who might find their answers through this episode, please don't forget to share it with them. And we will keep coming back with more such exciting topics. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much.